it seems quite clear to me anyway that there are there's been an increase in um, in um, uh, excess mortality, um, but I've no idea why. Um, I, I obviously various reasons are posited. Um, some conspiracy theories, some not. I don't know, but I suppose what I find most perplexing, I, I don't know what the reason for that is. I would join um, Deputy Murphy, and I wouldn't often maybe join him, or he might wish me to join him in anything, but um, I would join him in, in saying that I have an open mind about the matter. I think we do need to, to find out what um, is behind the reason in, in excess deaths. But I, I suppose I'd just make a couple of observations. I mean, clearly, um, uh, there, there seems to be a, a, a worrying trend. I mean, obviously, diagnoses of various um, cancers in particular uh, were delayed as a result of COVID-19. Um, uh, whether that was inevitable, probably was, with the benefit of hindsight. I mean, hospitals were, were simply um, um, overcome by the um, treating people with, with COVID-19. But... I suppose it, the one thing that I took from it was that like, debts almost became, there was almost a hierarchy, uh, and debts from COVID-19 became almost a more serious matter than debts from anything else, and that was a, a major worry of mine. That's not in any way to, to, to take from the pain and suffering of families who lost people uh, who had COVID-19, uh, but, you know, I remember um, m my own mother was in a, a nursing home and thankfully died before COVID-19 arrived, uh, and it was the April of 2019, and um, she was quite ill, she had a, a flu, um, there was a flu doing the rounds, and a number of, of her fellow patients died at that time. And uh, a nurse said, you know, it's, it's, it's God, it's really sweeping them. And it's taken uh, X, uh, I, I remember the figure, but I mean, it, you know, um, it's taken a, a, a relatively large proportion of the, 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 the long-term patients. Um, and of course, she was very sad about it, very compassionate. I mean, the standard of nursing was, was excellent from this nurse and from all of the nurses in, in Raheen Community Hospital, indeed, all of the staff there. But I was struck during COVID-19 about, you know, how accepting we were that, that, that people die. And it is an inevitability that we die, and particularly at, at a certain age that people die, compared then to if the same number of patients had died in Raheen Community Hospital in April 2020 as they died from influenza in 2019, there would have been a, an RTE van outside it and there would have, it would have been the subject of discussions in this house. And that struck me as somewhat strange. Um, and I do think that we became incredibly focused on COVID-19 to the exclusion of everything else. And that, I think, was, was problematic. The other thing was how it became very apparent to me that, you know, everybody was saying, well, we need to follow the science. And of course, science isn't, unfortunately, very clear, particularly cutting edge science at any given time, what it indicates, what it doesn't. I mean, it, it is now abundantly clear, um, you know, that, uh, that the Earth orbits the sun. Um, but that's several hundred years after people nearly lost their lives for suggesting that and you know if, you know it wasn't clear at the time um, it is now um, but there's a lot of things that aren't clear now and what I, I suppose I, I find a bit concerning is the ideological how much ideology influences scientific belief and it does I mean I think it is wrong to suggest that scientists no more than anybody else can just park all of their views when they're arriving at a determination on something, because I don't believe anybody can, and I think we need to be aware of that as, in this house, I think it's something that we need to be more aware of, perhaps as a society, that everybody brings their baggage with them. 
and that baggage is going to inform how they view the world, it's going to inform how they do their, their jobs, and it's going to I inform all of the decisions that they make, because I don't think that you can park your ideology, park your philosophy, part of what has driven you to be a scientist, to give your life to this, um, and suddenly sort of say that there is an objective right answer and a wrong answer. I, I'm not convinced that that is the case. I, I am convinced, though, that there's an increasing people are increasingly adamant about the correctness of their own views and that their own views are not in any way influenced by anything other than the truth. And I, I suppose, like, social media, when it first arrived, was going to provide this sort of town hall forum for respectful debate and that everybody could have the respectful debates, not just with their neighbours and their friends, but with people all over the world. And instead of that, it's led to people becoming incredibly trenchant in their own views because they find them echoed. If they're echoed once anywhere else in the world, well, sometimes that's enough for people to feel affirmed in their views, and they become increasingly trenchant. This discussion of, of excess mortality in, in social media is just one example of that. I think it was right through COVID on both sides, uh, and I mean, there's a concern being expressed by many of conspiracy theorists on one side. I mean, there was plenty of abuse going around for, on from, from all sides and from people with all sorts of viewpoints on how we as a society should respond to COVID. So I think I've taken up enough time to say that I really have no idea what's causing this excess mortality, but we do need to investigate what's causing it. And we do need to realize that those who investigate it probably don't have a monopoly on, on, um, on, on accuracy either. Thank you.